laminated LCD kits seem to be the next iteration of backlighting our beloved retro handhelds, with the original Game Boy Advance up next to get the laminated LCD treatment. This new kit from Funny Playing uses a Nintendo DSi LCD, pre-laminated to a glass screen lens, which provides that period-correct retro look as well as other benefits, such as being nearly impervious to dust and that really fantastic aesthetic of having the LCD pushed right up against the lens. So let's take a look at Funny Playing's new kit and see if it's worth the upgrade. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we'll be taking a look at a new backlight LCD kit from Funny Playing for the original Game Boy Advance. This is the new ITA kit and what makes it unique is that it utilizes a Nintendo DSi LCD panel pre-laminated to a glass screen lens. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with these laminated screen kits, they're essentially an LCD that is adhered to a lens making it a singular assembly and not two separate pieces. This offers a few benefits, with one of the main ones being that you won't have to worry about getting dust underneath the glass, which is great news because that is definitely a huge pet peeve of mine. Additionally, the screen will come perfectly centered and aligned, making the installation process quite a bit easier, which is fantastic. This kit is very similar to the Game Boy Color and SP laminated IPS kits that I've covered previously on this channel. Anyway, in order to install this kit, you'll also need to purchase a specially designed shell from Funny Playing, specifically made to work with this laminated ITA kit. These shells appear to be good quality and come in a variety of colors. I got this nice looking cream colored one, which should look pretty good for this build. Now, another great thing about this kit is that it works with both 40 and 32 pin model GBAs, so no matter which one you have, you're good to go. It should be noted, however, that the installation is a little more challenging on the 40 pin model Game Boy Advance consoles. However, for the 32 pin models, installation is actually quite a bit easier and can be done without any soldering, basically making it a drop-in solution. So if you're planning on doing this mod and have limited soldering experience, I recommend getting a 32 pin model GBA. You can tell which model you have either by opening the console up and looking at the number near the LCD connector or by looking underneath the battery cover at this number right here. If it starts with a one, it's a 32 pin model. And if it starts with a zero like mine does, then it's a 40 pin model. So since I have the 40 pin model GBA, I will be demonstrating the installation on it, but don't worry because the process is nearly identical to the 32 pin model with one extra step that I will highlight during the tutorial. Now to really finish the build off, I will also be installing this funny playing rechargeable battery kit, which does feature a USB-C port for recharging. Everything I'm using for this build can be purchased from Retro Game Repair Shop. And if you use the coupon code TITO at checkout, you can save 10% on your entire purchase. All right, so that's enough chit chat. Let's get right into tricking out this Game Boy Advance with these new kits. Okay, so since I already have the motherboard removed from the GBA, we're gonna go ahead and prep it. To do that, we'll need to remove capacitor C54. To do that, add some fresh solder to both sides, and then with the tip of your iron, heat both sides at the same time to remove it. Now I do have to warn you, be careful to not accidentally remove the small resistor right next to it during this step, since it would be pretty annoying to have to reinstall it. And do take note, if you have a 32 pin model motherboard, then you do not need to worry about this step. Next, we need to remove some plastic flashing here on the front shell. Just simply cut it off with some flush cutters. Then if you want, you can file away some of the burrs to tidy up the opening. Now let's prep the laminated LCD panel. If you have this piece of plastic securing the driver board to the LCD, simply lift it off, but don't remove it. Slip the kit's included bracket in between the driver board and the LCD panel, and then set the driver board on top, and then reapply the tape. Moving back to the front shell, locate this retaining lip at the top, and then slip the LCD assembly below it. The bracket does have aligning grooves to help guide it into place. Then carefully open the ribbon cable bail on the driver board and then insert the appropriate ribbon cable for your motherboard. In my case, I'll be using the cable for the 40 pin model GBA. 
Now this next step is also optional. Soldering these three wires here will allow you to adjust the brightness of the screen using a combination of the select button and triggers. However, if you don't install these optional wires, you can still control the brightness with the integrated touch sensor, shown here. And here's how the wires look soldered to the ribbon cable. Now we need to solder the other ends of the wires to the motherboard. The select wire goes to the test pad TP2. The left trigger wire goes to test pad TP9. And the right trigger wire goes to test pad TP8. Great. Now go ahead and drop in all the buttons and membranes. Then very carefully insert the LCD ribbon cable into the GBA motherboard and lock it in. And then secure the motherboard to the front shell. And here's the touch sensor. You'll want to gently fold it over itself so that it resides inside the shell and you'll want to push it as far to the front of the console as possible so that it doesn't come into contact with the rear shell. To do this, I tape the sensor to the top of the shell as shown here. See how it's folded over itself with an air gap in between the sensor and the actual main ribbon cable. That's exactly what you want. I used a thin spudger to help assist with taping the sensor to the top of the shell. Okay, before going any further, go ahead and install the rear shell to the console and drop in a couple batteries just so we can make sure everything is working. Okay, the screen turns on and everything looks great. Now go ahead and secure the rear shell to the console. Now looking at the battery compartment, you'll notice that it's been specially molded to accept battery kits, which is great. To install our funny playing battery, we'll first need to remove these contacts. Then drop in the battery cell like so. And then route the wire so that it doesn't fall on top of the battery. Routing it along the outer edges seems to work best. Then making sure the wire doesn't get pinched, drop in the custom battery board on top, inserting it at an angle as shown, and then pushing the contacts into place. Then you can see me here routing the wire into the channel where the contacts used to be to keep everything nice and tidy. Then go ahead and connect the battery to the board. The last step is to adhere this copper block to the PCB. I'm assuming this is acting as a heat sink to help keep the battery cool while in operation. And then install the custom battery cover which has an opening for the USB-C port. And here you can see me struggling a bit to remove the plastic film, and that's because some of it got pinched in between the shell and the glass lens. Since this kit is laminated, it probably would have been easier to just remove the plastic film altogether prior to installing the ITA assembly. Anyway, to wrap things up, go ahead and put on any labels that you may have. And that's it. We've successfully installed the laminated ITA kit and battery pack from Funny Playing. So this is probably one of the easier kits I've installed for the Game Boy Advance. Funny Playing has really perfected these screen mods and it's really amazing to see how far these kits have come over the years. Now it should be noted that one thing you may notice after installing this kit is some screen flickering. This is completely normal and can be easily fixed by adjusting the potentiometer below the rear label. The easiest way to see the flickering is by using the 240p test suite under the color bleed menu and adjusting the potentiometer until there is no noticeable flicker. The gray block on the bottom left was very noticeably flickering until I made my adjustment. Okay, so with the screen properly calibrated, let's go over the features of this build. Taking a look first at the ITA kit, there really isn't much to it. You can adjust the screen's brightness using either the touch sensor on top or by pressing and holding the select button while tapping either the L or R trigger if you went ahead and soldered the optional wires. Another feature, if you could call it that, is the look of the ITA panel. Since it's using the lower screen of a Nintendo DSi, it has a look that's pretty close to that of an AGS 101. So in a sense, you get a more authentic retro look, which really isn't easily replicated by, say, an IPS kit. If that's a look that you're going for or really enjoy, then the ITA kit is definitely worth considering. Now, it should be noted that Funny Playing also has a laminated IPS kit coming soon for the original GBA, and as soon as I get my hands on it, I'll be making a video covering it so we can see what the differences are between the two. The IPS kit is sure to have some benefits over the ITA kit. However, like I said, if the aesthetics of the ITA screen is something you prefer, then it may be the kit for you. 
Additionally, since the ITA kit utilizes a TFT panel, it is more power efficient when compared to some of these IPS kits. This means you'll get longer play sessions in between charges, but also that depends on what brightness setting you're using. And speaking of charging, taking a look at the battery, there again isn't too much to say other than it utilizes a USB-C connection for recharging, which is nice, and it has these LED indicators to denote its status. Blue for when it's charging, and green for when it is fully charged. The LEDs are bright enough to shine through non-translucent shells, like this cream-colored one that I have here. Alright, so those are the primary features of this build, but now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I have to say I am pretty impressed with the display and rather enjoy the more retro look of the TFT panel. Looking at this build as a whole, Funny Playing has done a great job with the shell and how the ITA screen integrates into it. Not to mention the battery kit, which comes with a color matched cover for each of the Funny Playing shells and also features an opening for the USB-C connector. Additionally, the battery compartment comes already trimmed to fit the battery kit seamlessly, but it also is compatible with normal AA batteries. The whole package makes installation of the ITA screen and the battery pretty easy. Shell trimming and struggling to make components fit is honestly now a thing of the past. And if you have a 32-pin model GBA, then you can essentially complete the installation of the ITA kit and the battery without any soldering, which is pretty fantastic. And the last pro is the fact that the screen comes pre-laminated to the lens. This means you won't have to worry about dust getting between the LCD and the lens or about any potential alignment issues. Everything just works and looks great. All right, so those are the pros, but now let's get into the cons. And honestly, I can't think of many. I always try to find at least one thing wrong with these mods that I review, but this one is pretty solid. However, one issue that I did have was that the brightness kept getting triggered autonomously, which was pretty annoying. But as I explained in the tutorial, this was resolved by taping the touch sensor to the shell as close to the front of the unit as possible. So in the end, it wasn't that huge of a deal. Another potential con is price. It's pretty much in the ballpark of most kits out there at roughly 60 bucks. But you do need to also purchase the shell, which is another 15. So out the door, this kit will cost you about $75. Now, if you want to add the battery kit, that's another 40. So all in all, this whole build will cost you about 115 bucks, not including the console. So while not cheap, I do think the kit is pretty polished with an installation process that's fairly approachable, especially for the 32-pin model Game Boy Advance. But don't take my word for it. I've covered a bunch of these kits on this channel and even have a playlist dedicated to Game Boy Advance mods, which you can check out right here and come to your own conclusion. So definitely give those videos a look. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next Thursday.